and have those children or men begin to say, I did this, I take responsibility for it. It's just like the um, children that are born out of wedlock, you know, the responsibility is not just on the, the men, but it's on the women. Thanks, caller. Mr. Derbyshire? Yes. If I could just make a comment about the previous caller, uh, I think what you're seeing there and what so appalled her was just to hear these things spoken about. There is a large contingent of Americans who believes that you shouldn't talk about this at all. And there's another contingent of Americans who are just tired of the whole thing. Uh, I think it was, oh, 25 or 30 years ago, Norman Mailer said that America has had enough of the, of hearing about the Negro and his problems. Well, now we're a couple of decades further on, and a lot of people just don't want to hear about it. I think there's a fairly widespread conviction that, as I said, no, nobody knows what to do about these terrible differential rates in things like incarceration and illegitimacy. And it's best if we just forget about them and get on with our lives. I think that's uh, a poor prospect for America if, if that opinion spreads. But I do think I see it spreading. Yes, I think that lady belonged to the first group. Uh, let's go to... Now, go, go ahead. I'm sorry, I, I didn't address the second call. <laughs> I, I, uh, I would just say again about what she said, that while this is marvelous work and worthy work, and everybody should praise anybody doing that kind of work, if you're talking about counseling people, you have to actually get them into the counselor's office. They either have to be directed there because they've got into trouble somehow, or they have to walk in voluntarily. And those two categories are never going to cover more than a tiny fraction of the people you really want to get to. Let's go next to Detroit, Michigan. Good morning. Uh, yes. I think part of the problem is that people, just like the gentleman said, people want to forget about black people and the problems that face black people, just like the guy who was beaten severely in Louisiana just a few days ago. Um, it's ridiculous that black people have to face these problems for years and years. I mean, it's not like they've ever really had a hand up since slavery. I mean, we never got our 40 acres and a mule. I mean, uh, yeah, you're tired of hearing this thing, but these things are issues to keep black people in place. I mean, why have there never, why aren't there more black CEOs and, and, and members of Congress and senators? Um, the power structure and, and, the, and the ceiling has never allowed black men, particularly because I'm, I'm, I think white America is afraid of black men, to let them progress and let them grow and, 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 and find their way in this country. I mean, there is an air of elitism about America uh, that, that most of the world is now sensing that America is not the uh, democratic place that it, 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 it appears to be. Call, I mean, caller, if you have money on one end, you're okay. Caller, if you don't have money, I mean, people don't have health care. I mean, what, what about these issues? Caller, what about the issues that are... Caller, 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 caller. Can I ask you a question? If your premise is right, that there is a ceiling and no one can get there, how is it that three major corporations in this country, the largest media company in the world, AOL, Time Warner, Merrill Lynch, and, and American Express all have African Americans running them? They're the CEOs. Explain that. I mean, there are a few that have broken through to get to those levels, but I mean, percentage rates, as far as the number of... Um, white Americans who are in charge compared to the number of white Americans there are. I mean, it, it just doesn't correlate. I mean, he, the, the, the gentleman you're talking to just alluded to the number of um, people who are in prison is, is, is skewed. So, I mean, the number of leaders in this country is, is, is skewed. The, the number of opportunities is skewed. I mean, all the jobs are being shipped overseas. I mean, there's just no jobs. There's just no opportunities for people to progress in this country, and I think it's a beautiful thing they're doing coming with another Million Man March, because black people do need to take responsibility for themselves, but it, it, 
They need to break through the ceiling first. All right. Okay, thanks. Mr. Darbyshire, what are you hearing? <clears throat> Uh, I'm hearing a thing I often hear from uh, black Americans, which is that it's all the white man's fault. I, I can't agree with that. Uh, you were kind enough to mention, Brian, that I've got a book coming out which is about the history of mathematics. Now, let me tell you something. If you are black and American and a, a good mathematician, you can walk into any math department in any university in this country. They are so conscious of how short they are of black mathematicians, black scientists, black te technical people. They're desperate to hire them. And it's the same all over American society and has been for 30 years. Our big corporations are so anxious to get some black faces into their corporate mission statements. They're so White people have such good will towards black Americans at large, and they want black Americans to succeed. And this idea which so many black Americans seem to have, that every white person is, uh, has this secret desire to stomp on the faces of black people. Well, let me tell you, I hang around with white people mostly, and I don't know any white American who wouldn't crack a bottle of champagne if, if black imprisonment rates and black illegitimacy rates went down just to the white level, and if the numbers of black CEOs and, and, and uh, black managers were to increase, we'd be delighted. We, I, 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 speaking for white Americans, if I may be so impertinent, we, we hate having this problem. We'd love for black America and white America to just come together and have the same statistical rates of everything. That would be great. I'd love that. And all the white people I know would love it. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you go through life thinking that white Americans are, 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 are all hypocrites and liars and secretly plotting to keep you down, I'm sorry, I can't help you, except just to say that it's not true. Sacramento, California, for John Darbyshire of the National Review Online. Go ahead, please. Uh, good morning. First of all, I find it very comical that your guest calls himself a conservative from the heartland of America, and he has a British accent. To, to, to me, that, 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 that's comical. But let, let me tell you how a real conservative feels. I'm a Christian, and I'm also a member of the military and I want to let you know sir Mr. Derbyshire if that's the way you pronounce your name that African Americans have contributed greatly to this country I know many of them now sir serving in Iraq over the percentages of the population now now you mentioned about the the, the crisis in black America so what do you call those soldiers serving protecting your rights because obviously you haven't served in the military, and, and you probably aren't or don't want to. And, and, and another thing, as far as the fact that, that, and that's the problem with the Republican Party now, is that we have people like yourself, sir, people like Bill Bennett, who just for no reason taunt others that are different than yourselves. Until we realize that we're all Americans, and, and obviously you're not, I can tell by your accent that you're not an American. Caller, hold on a second. What, where did John... Derbyshire taunt black Americans in this conversation. He keeps he keeps talking about the percentages that are incarcerated. Now, if you really want, because obviously your your guest isn't aware of our history, African Americans were enslaved for two hundred years. It was this country. It was our country, the United States of America. We created the welfare state, and all of a sudden, you want that to go away? You 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 want us to forget? and the African-Americans to somehow what happened to them over those 200 years with their families being split up, with the fact that, that, that they were treated like animals? Caller, uh, my screen says you're from Sacramento and that you're a George Bush supporter. Number one, are you an African-American? No, not at all. And number, actually, and number actually, two? I'm a, I'm a Mexican-American. Okay, number two, are you a George Bush supporter? Yes, I am a George Bush supporter because he doesn't agree with people like this gentleman. I see. Okay, Mr. Darbyshire, what do you say to that? 
Well, I'll, ask, I'll answer one of the gentleman's questions very directly. He said, do I want black people to forget their 200 years of slavery and oppression and the following 100 years of uh, humiliation? Uh, my, my truthful answer is yes, I actually do. And I, I think we might get some way towards solving this country's problems if uh, black people did forget about those things. Um, my, own, my own ancestors were working people in the north of England. Both my grandfathers were coal miners working with pick and shovel underground in great danger and dirt for very low wages. Uh, I keep that in my mind, but I don't, uh, I don't make it the basis of my world view. Um, uh, and I don't think that uh, black Americans do themselves or America any good by cherishing this image of victimhood. I think they should set that aside. There's a place in their heart where they can keep it and take it out and look at it from time to time. As I take out and look from time to time at the lives of my own ancestors, which weren't that spiffy. But uh, that's, that's, that's nothing to base a view of the world or politics or your country on. Mr. Derbyshire, what year did you and come on, to the United on an, States? On another point, on another point, sir, I am an American. I'm a naturalized American. I waited years to become an American. What year did you come to the United States? Uh... I first came here in 1973, but I began going through the process of green card naturalization in 1986. Gross Point, Michigan, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Yes, good morning, gentlemen. I'm looking at the New York Times editorial page here, and I know John writes on uh, these delicate topics from time to time. I'm looking at their comment on the um, sex abuse scandal in the church in California there. And I really consider it a scandal as a Catholic myself that at the beginning of the article, uh, of the editorial and at the end of the editorial they characterize it as pedophilia now the uh, report that was issued by uh, the uh, outside the church there the, re the report uh, stated that it was in fact um, not an issue of pedophilia that was a very small percentage and that is of course prepubescent children that this was a scandal of postpubescent children and that um, you know, when these young women, these school teachers, were having affairs with some of their students, no one classified it as pedophilia. Uh, if a young man goes out and gets a 15, 16, 17, 18-year-old woman, it's not considered oh, pedophilia. It's considered molestation or seduction. And I think the church has been slandered to a degree when uh, usually liberals' papers or editorials classify it as pedophilia, and I think it's an attempt, and this is why I bring John Derbyshire into this, it's an attempt to cover up for a, a quite pervasive problem of a homosexual men who seduce or proposition young men rather than children, and, and that's altogether a, a, a different um, impulse. Thanks. Mr. Derbyshire, kind of a wild swing from one issue to another. What do you have to say about this? Yeah, uh, I, I do agree with the caller that there's an important difference, and I believe clinically there's an important difference between pedophilia, which is erotic attraction to children, and I think the term is aphibophilia, which is the attraction of an adult man to a teenage or, or just prepubescent boy. Um, uh, that, that last uh, has some historical track record. It was a feature of some, of, some ancient societies. And uh, true pedophilia, I think, is, is, is quite a different thing and a much more serious disorder. Um, the church, I, I always feel a little hesitant about passing any comment on this church scandal because it's not my church. And it's really for the people of the Roman Catholic Church themselves to, to sort it out. 
I do think, for what it's worth, 